right, it is time for a bit of a Friday chat and check-in video. Hey everyone, it is Shannon and I'm super excited to be here today and to share with you this video. In my Friday chat videos, I share a little bit about what I have been reading and what I have been watching and I have some books to share this week. Some books that I am reading, one book that I finished, I picked up some books from the library, um, and also I finished up a bunch of TV stuff because, well, the season of live TV kind of wrapped up. So, and I have a bit of a plan of what I want to do for the near future for TV. We'll see if it happens. It's still sort of mostly in the idea stage uh, it's just a sort of light project because there's not as much live TV on um, but let's start with the books so I did go to the library recently and I did there to get the uh, sorry voyage of the frost heart by Jamie Littler this is my current buddy read with Izzy and Kay Kelly the live stream is next week on Izzy's channel if I'm remembering correctly <clears throat> um, and I will put the information down below this is this is a lot bigger <laughs> than I thought it would be it is an illustrated kids book um, I really like the illustrations. Ooh, there's the creatures. Um, and they're not on every page, but from the preview on Amazon, I really thought that they were on every page. It is a pretty fast read, but it is over 400 pages. So I actually really have to um, make some uh, dedicated time because I, I sort of guessed how long I thought it would take and I underestimated. Now, I don't think it'll, you know, it's not going to take me that, that long, but, um, you know, but there's lots of pages with no illustrations and I do like the illustrations. And anyway, so I'm looking forward to, I got a bit, I'm on a hundred, I'm out a quarter of the way through and I think I have a week left so for me that makes me very nervous I know I can do it it's just it's not the pace that I would normally go for anyway looking forward to um continuing this it is a story of what's the character's name Ash um and he is uh he lives in an ice and snow centered area and town um and um i do have some challenges with some of this stuff but i think they're like challenges to you know things to overcome and ways to show that you're not supposed to do that but one of the big challenges i have with this one is that his his uh, the community that he lives with is telling him not to do something that he very instinctually feels in his heart to do and they're 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 very much against that and so that is quite a conflict that that's a conflict that I'm not a huge fan of but I really do feel like you know it's a kid's book and the story is going to be how you know that's not the right perspective hopefully hopefully it'll be that and it does i feel like because i feel like especially with title of voyage of the frost heart i didn't anticipate that i thought this would be like an adventure story especially because we got a band of you know misfits kind of vibe from the cover and i think we're getting there it just took a little longer to get to sort of that sort of element so far like it starts where somewhere where i feel like he felt he's pretty sad and he's being um you know like there's some repression you know um enforced by the people that he's around and I'm just like hey that's not what I signed up for but we're getting there and I actually there is uh some new characters that have come along and that are in interesting and engaging and curious and all that kind of stuff so we're getting there and um I'm looking forward to continuing it I do have to pick up the pace though because um I have a week left in like 300 pages so that for me that's a lot even with a kid's book so I just I I just misguessed how long I thought I needed for this one and now I know because I really thought it'd be like almost every page was illustrated and that's a bit much faster pace but um but yeah really enjoying it the characters are interesting I'm curious to see where it goes I'm sort of like where where I feel like I'm finally at the point where I thought the story was going to start so things are picking up so looking forward to seeing more um and as I was at the library I did decide to just sort of look at the shelves and pick up a few things um because this one they do have it. They actually have the audiobook, but with the illustrations, I wanted to read the book this way. And the they don't the ebook. Well, I'm I can't read ebooks on my tablet because Libby doesn't work on Fire tablets. So Libby doesn't work on Amazon Fire tablets. 
So anyway, so it was available from the library, so I got that. I've already requested the second one. I'm being curious to see if Izzy and K. Kelly enjoy this one and if we'll continue the series. I think it's a three or four book series. Um, but um, yeah, but I got out to the library and so I decided just to look at the shelves, especially the stuff on the kids um, section. So I did also get and also read, I read a book. I read My Pencil and Me by Sarah Varnon. Um, and this is, this is a bit meta. Um, it is a b book about an author who's not sure what to write. And, you know, with the help of her dog, they come up with a bit of a brainstorming session and, you know, an idea and, you know, a story comes to life. And it's really cute and I quite enjoyed it. And I have not been reading a lot, but I did finish something in June already. Yay, go me. So I love kids' picture books and the library is a great place to get them. That was the only picture book that I got. And I'll admit, I mostly, I one of the reasons I got it was that I wanted to pick up the reading challenge. <laughs> And then the advanced challenge, and I needed something that it would fit in. So this was my selection so I could get that because I didn't have anything in my bag where I, this would lie flat. So I did. I don't know if I'll do the reading challenge. Probably not. But I just I wanted to take that home. And so I was like, OK, I need a big book. So I got my pencil in me and I quite enjoyed it. Um, I also picked up. Um, so this one's hard to tell which is the title, which is the series. I think it's Catch the Munchies. By David Fremont, and it's the series is Carlton Crumble Creature Catcher, book one. And so this is a graphic novel with, wow, someone, <laughs> I don't even know. It's luxury, adventure, and monsters, and I mean, that's, it actually kind of reminds me of Catstronauts, the, the layout and the color and stuff like that. So I was very, there's a lot of enthusiasm. That's always going to go over well with me. So that I picked up and I haven't started that one yet. I also picked up, oh, this does say number four. I missed that when I was at the library. So this is, the series is Genie and Genie, number four. Not So Happy Camper. And this is by... Trish Granted, illustrated by Manuela Lopez. And this is a very uh, young chapter book, illustrated kids book. So it seems like it has some, some magical elements with the genie who knows a genie. What does that say? Twin? Twin interruption. <laughs> Lay on words. Always good. Looks like some fun shenanigans. If there's actual magic or not, I'm not sure. But, you know, uh, I hope there is. Um, I also uh, got this one, The Bad Guys. This is the first in the Bad Guys series by Aaron Blab Blabby? Is that how you say that? Blob Bay? <laughs> I am not sure. Apparently, this has been made into a, ma a major motion picture by DreamWorks, or soon to be. I don't know. So anyway, this is another very, this is more, I don't know if you would call this an illustrated novel or a graphic novel. It's a very heavily illustrated. Um, I'm actually curious, I'm actually surprised there was that one thing. Usually when there's anything that you can fill in, people fill it in. So I'm surprised, oh, where was it? I lost it. Oh no, it was things typed out. So I have no idea. See this, I would imagine some kid would have written in this. <laughs> Maybe it's a newer edition. Anyway, it says um, they're scary and dangerous and, well, just bad. But these guys want to be heroes and they're going to prove it by breaking every last dog out of the pound. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's awesome. The bad guys are ready to do some good, whether you want them to or not. Oh my god. So, I mean, that just sounds like a lot of fun. And this is sort of like my reading pace right now is like lots of illustrations. So anyway, because I haven't been reading very much. So I'm hoping to increase that by um, making things fun and interesting and easy to say yes to. And then last up, I did pick up something from the graphic. I did look at the graphic novels and the manga section, the adult graphic novels and manga section. There wasn't any volume one mangas that I haven't already read um, or um, 
were part of a series that there's a couple that I had borrowed before and never gotten to and sometimes I d I'm like well I didn't get to it last time why would I get to it this time so but there wasn't anything there for me unfortunately um most of the series I have either read um or started or volume one was unavailable but I did pick up one um comic bind up and that is the magic order by Mark Miller and Oliver oh. Copel. So this looks sort of like urban fantasy, you know, magic, and it was volume one, and um, so that looked interesting to me. It's a little, oh, I'm glad I didn't open on that page, adult, <laughs> but <laughs> um, I mean, pretty creepy, you know, and as I said, volume one says, there's a reason you've never seen a ghost. By day, these people live among us and our friends, our neighbors, and co-workers. By night, there are sorcerers, wiz wizards, magicians that protect us from the forces of darkness. Oh! It says, presenting Netflix debut comic book series by the superstar creative team of Mark Miller and Oliver Corpier. I can't, no, that's not how you pronounce that. Olivier... Olivier I don't know how to pronounce their last name, but that makes, I don't understand that presenting Netflix's debut comic book series by the superstar. So Netflix created the comic series. That sentence is not great. I don't know. I don't know. Is this a Netflix series? I don't think so. I think if it was, I would have known because I tend to have, um, it does, well, it does say Netflix here. I don't know if they are presenting it or I'm not sure. If Netflix has an urban fantasy series and I missed it, I am going to be very unhappy. So, and those are the people involved who created the work. So, yeah, so I haven't read that one yet, but I am curious about it. I do love urban fantasy, um, and I do find a lot of it sort of ends up being super, super dark. I think we're just still in that time where a lot of stuff is super dark. Um, but um, I thought I would check it out, and I think they had some of the other... Um, bind ups of which would be great if I wanted to continue reading it. So that's what I got. It's not a huge amount comparatively, but I was getting, um, I was picking stuff up on the same day where I had to do some other things. So I had to be, um, swift because I was doing this before I had like a sort of scheduled thing and, um, I could only carry so much because I was picking other stuff up on the same day, which normally I wouldn't do. But I, there was some time pressure to get my buddy read in. And I do have a hold in for book two, as I mentioned, and I'm hoping to pick that up. If we don't um, continue to read the series, that's fine, but it's just easier. Now that I know that I would prefer to have a couple of weeks to read it, um, I decided to get the hold early. And um, so, and then I might have more... Uh, relaxed time to pick up some books. I would like to get a fair amount of picture books because again, as I mentioned, and I mentioned in other videos this year, that my tablet is not, um, I can't use Libby on my tablet and they did retire uh, overdrive from being connected to the library. So I don't have a way of reading uh, ebooks on my tablet. And I actually ended up like Libby's not working on my phone. I, 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 it was working and then it just wasn't. And then I uninstalled it and reinstalled it and it's not working. And I'm just like, this is just not working. And I really do feel like one of the big reasons I'm not reading a lot this year is I can't access ebooks from my library. So I think, you know, for I am, I do feel like I'll probably end up buying a new tablet, but there's always like, you know, which price range and quality range do you go for? And do you go for something that's been on the market for a while and it's pretty stable? Or do you go for something that's new and more expensive, but, you know, may or may not be great? I don't know. I just get stuck in that loop of sort of bigger purchases and then don't make a decision. So maybe for the summer, I'll go, you know, go use the physical library, um, uh, especially for like kids books and picture books and just, just one, one thing at a time and just get back to it a little at a time. It was great to go and to browse. And especially I really did want to look at, my intention was to look at more sort of like illustrated kids books, uh, because me and Izzy and Kay Kelly really like reading illustrated ki uh, kids books. And sometimes that's easier like like when you're at the shelves and you can just flip through stuff because when you look online for recommendations like a lot of the recommendations that you get in articles we've read all of them 
<laughs> you know, or we've read most of them or some of them aren't accessible or whatever it may be, or some of them are really long or some of, or like some of us have read parts or all of the series. So anyway, I just thought it would be a good idea. But this time I actually didn't do that, but maybe I will do that the next time that I'm at the library to get some more. And if you have any recommendations for illustrated kids books, I know I have asked that many times before we have read, um, we did read the, the series of unfortunate events, of course, and I'm trying to think of um, some of the other ones. A lot of the ones we read where it was like the the uh, chapter page had illustrations, like the the first the chapter. Had, what was the last one we just finished? Oh, oh my goodness gracious, I can't remember. It. So anyway, but yeah, so so hopefully more library trips for that kind of goodness, especially now that the weather is better because that's when I can go to the library. So that's been, you know, I haven't been reading a lot, but I've gotten a little bit back to it. And I think the best thing to do is just to, you know, enjoy that and enjoy that I'm reading a little bit more and keep it very light and low pressure. Um, I don't feel like adding pressure there has done me any good. And I do really think that part of the, the reason I haven't been reading part, but not all of the reason I haven't been reading as much is because I don't have access to um, my library books. Because <laughs> that was 65 to 75% of my reading is from the library. So, yeah. <laughs> and so the down tick this year is... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, I will try and solve that uh, in some way, shape, or form. Um, but yeah, so that's sort of the book stuff. And then in terms of the TV stuff, um, I am, or maybe before the TV stuff, I always like to say one of the other things, because I do want these videos to be a bit more, like, a little bit about everything kind of idea, um, because I haven't been reading as much. And I have watched the movies recently, and I do plan on having a video, two videos about some of the films that I've watched recently. I did take a bit of a break from watching watching movies to watch the AWC, the Arena World Cup, uh, for the final season of Dragonflight, uh, the World of Warcraft Arena, it's esports, <laughs> um, um, so it's a uh, three versus three player versus player content, um, the, the big showdown for the entire expansion, like a year and a half uh, worth of, um, you know, games leading up to this moment. I actually don't know if it's like just for the season or if the, if it means if they were gathering points for the whole time. I don't really understand all of that. I just love watching the arena. Um, the, 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 um, the matches. It's just so much fun. I learned so much about the game. The commentators are great. They added someone new this time around, Lithy, who is great. Um, and uh, I just really enjoyed all of the banter between all the commentators, as well as learning so much about the game. And it also lets you know what specs people are playing in terms of PvP. Um, and it changes all the time, like each season, especially the healers, I find like who who's using this and who's using that. And there's a high, like 80% of the people are playing one class and one spec for healing you know and then some people just always play the same class and I always find that that that's interesting to see especially longer term now that I've been watching arena for like I don't know like a year and a half maybe two years um so I've seen a lot of the same teams again and again and again and seen when they change specs and when they don't um and I just really find it a lot of fun so anyway so that was taking some of my movie watching time and energy which was fine and I knew it was coming and they shared what the schedule is so I knew that there was several um, the, you know, because it's a lot of, like, over one weekend, there are three live streams that are five to nine hours long, so it's, it's a lot, so I was not watching any movies on those weeks, but I did get back to some movies. I gotta say, I had not the best run of things. I did finally end up watching a couple of things I enjoyed, but I'm not sure how I feel about the things that I picked for this, this season or this quarter, which are science fiction films, trilogies, and fight the FOMO. Some of those have worked. I think it's the trilogies that are really throwing things for a loop and I can't decide whether I want to just chuck it and be like, look, this isn't working or try another approach to see if I can get it to work. Because the goal with trilogies is actually to finish some series that I've started and and never finished and now that they're available and especially in their entirety on streaming services that I have access to and I'm like I really feel like that would be a good thing to do to sort of just kind of close the door on that see how it all fared and, and all that stuff but it is sort of like kind of feeling like that was something I was interested in at a different time so 
am I still interested in it? I don't know. So I'm just, I don't know. I just, it feel, it also makes me feel locked in that one of the titles that I am, one of the film titles is, is already predetermined if I pick a trilogy. And that sort of makes me feel like I can or can't choose other things. The other approach is I can watch one trilogy all at once. It's not really my way unless I really, really like it, which makes me think, Maybe I don't want to watch these trilogies. I don't know. Anyway, so I'm having some sticky points there, but I did get to see some stuff, so I am happy about that. And then I have been getting back to doing some of the things that I, I did ages ago, like ages ago, uh, which is I've been um, practicing uh, with Duolingo again. It's been a long, long time. Um, and I've also been playing Luminosity again, which are brain teaser, brain games type of stuff. And so language skills and brain skills. And it's been really nice. It's been really nice to have some sort of like intellectual and learning kind of engagement and sometimes it's like just sort of uh, you know memory repetition that kind of stuff but it's just nice to do something and both of them it's been years and years and years since I um, did them but um, I have gotten back to them and I really like luminosity and one of the weird things is this the games you get three you can there's premium where it's five games a day or you can play the backlist of games unlimited and then it, there's a free version where you have three out of the five games you can play and you once you've played them through that for what that day you can play any of those three as much as you want some of them i really really like like the train of thought is one of my favorites i do like the um, and there's some that I just have hit the threshold of like how good I can get at that game. And it's not necessarily about beating your last high score, although I mean, <laughs> maybe it is. Um, but there are some that I'm just like, I'm just never going to be faster or collect more points than this threshold. Like, because some of them are speed, like recall things. And it's just like, this is how fast I can go at it. Um, but they also have math games and word games. And those ones I'm much better at at the computer than I am on my phone. Like, it's just, you know, as someone who's done touch typing since they were like, Eight. you know it's just like I'm still awkward like typing out words on my phone I'm like there's no way I'm gonna be fast at that um but um yeah now I feel like an old lady <laughs> It's okay. So anyway, but it's been really great. And then do I really enjoyed Luminosity a lot. I really, uh, let me know, do you play it? And do you have a favorite game? I definitely, Train of Thought and the coffee one. Pinball Recall, I actually quite enjoy. That one's, that one's a bit tough, but I like that one a lot. I like that sort of short-term working memory ones are ones that I, that I really enjoy. Um, or I find challenging and engaging in an, in an interesting and unique way. Um, and Divided Attention is definitely the, with the coffee game in the train game. I'm like, yeah, I like those ones. Um, and then also with Duolingo, it has been so long since I have played that I don't quite know where to go. Cause it's like, I, I got through like four levels or something, but the early stuff is super easy. The, the stuff I haven't learned yet is too hard. I think I haven't died. I haven't tried it. I'm a little nervous, but the weird thing is I've just been replaying old lessons that are somewhere in the middle. And one of the things that I found is that some of the things have changed change like there's some words I'm like they never use that word like they like um, I'm learning Danish and they used uh they had a word for banana and it's like banana so it's I knew it was banana but I'm like that never came up before that never came bread water you know or soda van soda water that that never came up before and but some I knew tea east uh, tea is tea, ice is ice cream, um, and ke is cake, and those ones were there, but sodavan, that was never, that was never there, so it's, so now I feel like kind of totally confused, so for right now, I'm just staying engaged and doing it once a day, but I don't know where to go in terms of, like, learning a new lesson, because, the lessons have changed. And even some of the, the, like, where are you, there's a where are you from sort of section and some of the, uh, the countries that were not there before, <laughs> like in terms of the translation, in terms of the learning, it wasn't there. Cause I'm like, uh, to school and I'm like, I have no idea where that is, but out of these options, it must be Germany. And it was, and I'm like, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So, I, so, but again, I find it engaging cause I find I kind of my own like learning a language. I know lots of people, People have different um, perspectives on like why they want to do it or how they find it engaging and how difficult or easy it is and different methods there's so much out there on it but for me I kind of think of it as sort of like code breaking you know like trying to 
understand that this represents this. You know, I think of it in that sort of a bit more like linear fashion as opposed to like understanding what someone is trying to say. Like I really try and feel like this means this and this means this, and, like in a bit more of a math sense. And I think part of that comes from that I'm learning it where you're literally trying to decipher, that might be a better term, decipher, you know, what that is as opposed to understand the meaning of something that for me that the meaning of something is deeper. You know what I mean? Like, why is someone saying that? Or what do they mean by that is different than the literal translation. But I'm fine with the literal translation. That's sort of how my brain works. I get to that deeper meaning like way later. <laughs> like, and, I, and I love and I can really miss it. Or I pick up on it, but I don't understand how it relates to the literal translation and that's fine it's all good and engaging stuff and I'm really happy to be getting back to some of those uh, activities on a regular basis and so I just you know I got it now I'm on, I have streaks for both of them and I don't want to miss a day so let me know are you doing Duolingo or Luminosity or do you have like a daily game or learning engagement type thing that you are enjoying um, these it's been years since I've done them because they keep stats and they're like you know the last time you had this record like I beat my record from like 2018 or something on Luminosity. I'm like, oh my gosh, has it really been that long since I played? So um, yeah, so it's fun to get back to. Um, and then in terms of TV, a whole bunch, I'll keep this a little brief, a whole bunch of the uh, reality TV series that I was watching wrapped up. I watched the most recent season of Survivor, um, So You Think You Can Dance, and this, and The Voice. Um, I, I really enjoyed this season of The Voice. I liked the new coaches. I was really happy happy with the results of the show. I always get nervous when it goes from coaches selection to voting. <laughs> There's a couple of seasons ago, it was a little <laughs> not great. Um, but I was really happy with how things went this season. Um, it was a very, it did feel like a very short season. There was not a lot of live shows. And um, I thought a lot, I think everyone in the top five was just great like really fabulous singers but I'm really happy with the results of the show um, and it's exciting to see that um, one of the new so this is a spoiler for one of the new coaches coming next season I don't know how many people watch the voice but it's really exciting to see that Michael Buble is going to be one of the coaches so it's nice to have a Canadian um, coach there um, and I don't think they've had anyone that sings the kind of music that he sings and but they have definitely had people audition for the show that do so I think that's a pretty good matchup and actually maybe you know they could have done something like that sooner um so we'll see how things go from here so um yeah so that's going to be in the fall and it does seem like both Survivor and The Voice are back to their you know have a season in the fall have a season in the spring um, as Survivor, I, I always enjoy the final Survivor episode because I love the questions from the jury. That is my favorite. I am not taking my eyes from the screen moment of the season. I am so curious as to what they ask. And, but I thought it was a bit harsh this year. Um, that section of it. So I didn't enjoy that one quite as much. And there was someone who made it very, very, very far into the show. And I watched every episode, often with Survivor, I'll miss one here or there, because I watch it live, and sometimes something else is going on. And I, but there was someone who made it really far. And I was like, I don't, I, I'm like, who is that person that they just talked to? I'm like, I don't remember seeing them ever on this entire, like, show, like, what? So that was really surprising. And I guess it just meant that they didn't do anything super, you know, influential or super devious or, you know, because it's just like, I genuinely was shocked that it got to like the fourth last episode. And there was someone I'm like, who is that? <laughs> so it also I do multitask when I watch. So there's also that element to it as well. But I do kind of feel like now they keep on talking about the sort of like new survivor. And it's so meta and everyone knows the game so well. And like everyone thinking like 10 steps ahead. And it does really feel like I feel like Big Brother is a little bit more like this than than survivor. But it does sort of feel like summer camp for adults, you know what I mean? Like it's a way to 
like get out there and do something that you never thought you'd do. Although a lot of people go to summer camp. I don't know. There's just something about it that's changed. And I think the ability to watch it streaming, you know, and to have all the statistics, uh, which was something that was not the case when the, when the show started, you know, it was very early days of that kind of stuff. Um, and, but now everyone knows so much and they're already like, I, this was season, I think 46 or 47, and they're already planning season 50, which is going to be all returning, um, survivors and, uh, cast members. I don't know if they're going to include winners and non-winners They'll probably do winners versus non-winners or something. Um, but I just kind of feel like, I don't know, like I just, I mean, I don't know how I feel about the show anymore. I feel like this is a lot of seasons and there's so much in-game, like, meta stuff that I feel like, I don't know. I don't know. There's just, I feel like, well, after 46 or 47 seasons, maybe it makes sense that the people who are still playing or still want to play, like some people have grown up watching the show since they were a kid. I'm like, I can't even understand that. I remember when it was like, no one thought like that this ridiculous idea would take. And here we are many years later. Anyway, so I don't know. Anyone else watch Survivor this season? How did you feel? How do you, did you watch The Voice? How are you feeling about the coaches for next season? I'm pretty excited for Michael Buble being on the show. That's that's pretty exciting. I can't remember all of the other coaches that are on next season, to be honest. Um, but I do have an idea. I did that. I start. I you know I haven't done a video for a while, so this one got long. I would like to say because there's not much new live TV, and I do tend to watch live TV. Um, there is a couple stuff, but it's all sort of it's all sort of game shows right now. That's all I've seen so far. I think I might try to for the summer or maybe just for June, just try and wrap up any TV shows where I have like 10 or less episodes. Because I have two, two shows where I have one episode left, two show, one show that I have two episodes left, one show that I have eight episodes left. And I think there's a couple that are more than that. But I'm like, maybe I just need to do a little finishing off of all of these shows and spend some TV time on shows that I have you know, so, some of them I bought and so I just, I missed a couple of episodes and then I just never got back to watching them live. So I just want to like finish off that season. So let me know, do you have any TV plans for the summer? Do you plan your TV at all or make TV goals at all? I think I will try and go for anything with 10 episodes or less to try and finish that off because I have a little open space in my TV watching schedule now that all of these shows have wrapped up because some of them are long, especially The Voice. It can be, you know, um, multiple episodes a week and some of them can be, you know, um, longer than the regular episode. But I think we're out. We don't, I don't even think we have a regular like format schedule timing anything for TV anymore. Like I still sort of like check and see what's new each week that on live TV summer, there's usually not a lot, but like, I feel like those days are, they're getting less and less where there actually is like this season other than, oh, I did watch So Help Me Todd. I forgot about that. Maybe I'll talk about that a little bit next time um, because I have some thoughts on it. Um, and it wasn't reality TV, but mostly what was on and available was reality TV. And I don't know if that's just what I chose to watch versus like that was interesting versus I don't know like there was other stuff but I didn't watch it anyway so that's a pretty weird spot to leave it but let me know I, I am thinking about doing a 10 episodes or less left kind of goal for the summer or maybe just for June just to get some progress and some finishes in um, because there are some some of those shows I started in like January or I mean in years past if we're being honest which we should be <laughs> I mean, I'm talking about TV. I don't feel like there's any any reason. I usually don't talk about anything until I've finished it, though. That's that's one one thing I don't tend to share. Um, but anyway, I am off topic, and this is run long. I hope that you enjoyed the video. I do hope to have. I will have another film related video out. Uh, soon, probably Saturday and then uh, next Saturday as well. And I hope to get back to filming regularly. I have fallen off the regular uh, schedule and I really would like to get back to it. It was great to sit down and have some chance to chat and catch up. Let me know what you have been up to, what you've been watching, any games you've been playing, and of course, have you been to your library recently? And I will talk to you um, in another video soon. Thank you so much for watching. Upside down. Oh, whoops.